so very sweet, very lovely to be with you. <clears throat> so if you can uh, just enjoy being. that which you already are just for now for this duration of this meeting you don't need to do anything simply notice the peace, the inner tranquility, whatever thoughts appear to you. Whatever images or sensations. They appear to you as awareness taking on the form of hearing. There are no separate objects. Nothing separate in your experience. It's undivided. Seamless. transparent formless awareness unopposed by anything no opposition No obstacles. Nothing that needs to be attained or overcome. Complete deep relaxation. It has no, no goal, not trying to get somewhere. Not trying to avoid anything.
we are that. Everything is that. Your body is that. The world is that. Your mind is that. All is that. As awareness, you are nowhere and everywhere. You are nobody and everybody. You are nothing and everything. Space appears to you as perceptions. The oak tree is in the yard. The car is in the garage. The fruit bowl is on the kitchen table. Space appears to you as forms. But it's not separate from you. Time appears to you as event A and event B. Breakfast this morning. Lunch yesterday. Time appears to you as events appear to you. But you, this transparent, aware presence, you do not appear in time and space. You do not appear neither as a perception nor as an event.
I am, but I don't know what I am. And that is sufficient. Because in I am, I know that I am. Amness and knowingness are not two. There is a, a certainty about I am, and a, a certainty about I know that I am, and I know that I know. the reality of being, the reality of awareness are one reality. There is absolute. You experience perceptions and thoughts, sensations, images. Whatever you experience, either there is no experience at all, or there is a reality to that which you experience. The reality of hearing, the reality of perceiving a thought, the reality of the world. is the same absolute reality of being awareness. Amnes, knowingness, that which is certain in your experience is the reality of being awareness. So you can bring everything to that absolute reality. You can bring your thoughts and your perceptions, your sensations, the world, to this reality, the reality of awareness. So that there is no other reality but the one reality, the reality of being, being awareness.
with the reality of all your thoughts. Is I awareness? The reality of your body, all the sensations, all the images of your body, Is this formless reality of being awareness? So you can surrender your thoughts, and your sensations. your perceptions. To that, the reality. You can surrender them to the infinite, invisible, absolute, reality of consciousness. Because all forms are a manifestation of the formless, which is the reality when you perceive a form, in fact, you are looking at the formless, appearing as a form. And that which is looking is the formless itself. God creating out of herself infinite forms that are made out of herself. That she creates and perceives instant by instant. In the eyes that perceive this perception are the eyes of God. The thoughts that are perceived are conceived, created, and perceived 
by God. Omnipotent. Omniscient. The closer you get to God, the more you are lost and dissolved in her. Every thought belongs to her. Every perception, every sensation is hers. What you are looking for, you already are. You are the source and the destination.
life is your playground. You don't need to spoil the party. You don't need to complicate it. Okay, so if you have any questions, anything that you would like to explore, please make sure to unmute your mic and welcome to turn on your video. Yeah, it's a question that I will go through that somebody sent me. But in the meantime, let's just explore whatever questions or comments you you may have. So any questions? Hello, Hogar. Hello, Magdi. Um, would it be okay to say that the mind is, is a machine for mental images or stories? Absolutely, it is, it is. But it's not the, the creator. In other words, the computer doesn't it doesn't as a metaphor doesn't program itself and create its own images there is a, there is a programmer there's somebody who writes a program who decide, designs yes absolutely the mind is a very ex, exquisite um, instrument uh, of perceptions and uh, tool to uh, of, uh, celebration of uh, the creativity of the creator, uh, creative thinking and uh, images and 
memories and concepts and uh, analytical thinking. And, Correlative, correlative capacity to correlate, to, to compare, to, to regress, to retrace. It's the more you look into the intricacy of the body-mind instrument, it's it's. It's a great potential, great capacities. And for example, the even tele telepathy that, that via the mind or images that can arise that uh, that copy the, the copy an exact duplicate of uh, the exact duplicate image across vast space, even across time, it can be telepathic uh, perceptions of events that happened 20 years ago in somebody else's mind. What really makes me happy or fulfilled or has nothing to do with the content of the mind. Yes, the fulfillment comes from being. Being, yeah. So it's, what's the use of a very beautiful fair or a circus without you? There could be magnificent, magnificent cir circus, the secret of Cirque du Soleil, but without you, <laughs> what's what's so magnificent about the body and the mind without you? So what is magnificent is your presence. Is is presence? Is awareness? Is consciousness? That is what we delight in. Is our our being. And uh, that's what we delight in each other. It's what's the use of all the words that very intricate or very sophisticated or very intelligent or very loving words that we share without you and I, without being. Be empty sound bites in the space, in empty space. So the, the teaching that there is nothing and, and nobody is, is an incomplete teaching. There is nothing and nobody physical or actual in actuality, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a separate reality. But absolutely there is being, there is I. And that's, that's the delight. The delight is not the delight in the form is the delight in the enjoyment and the celebration of the form. And the enjoyment and the celebration, they do not belong to the form, they belong to I, to consciousness, to awareness. It's, uh, I remember I used to go to these silent seven day retreats. They were not only silent, but you also had to keep your eyes down. There was you, you weren't like looking around, you know. It was a the Zen tradition, very austere, let's say. And in this week of silence and looking down, not looking at anybody's face, there was such an intimacy. Sometimes after the retreat, people will come to me and say, Oh, I really loved uh, you know. You know, I felt so close to you. <laughs> so it's, it's 
it's not so much uh, the content, as you said, or the, the images. It's the presence. And when the presence is honored, acknowledged, recognized, not sort of put in the background or discarded, the presence is acknowledged somehow. It's really beautiful. Because we, what we love in each other is what we honor in each other is the being. So is it more like an acquired taste? I mean, because it was there all the time. It was just, I just overlooked it. I wasn't mm -hmm. aware of it. it yeah. Didn't. You know, it's like I remember once I went to uh, I took my kids it was in Vermont, I believe or somewhere upstate in, in New England to a uh, in, in the countryside in a small town sort of a country town they had a festival uh, a, a maple syrup festival, and I'm, I have a sweet tooth, so I says, "Oh, I have to take my kids to the." They will enjoy. There were all sorts of uh, displays about how the harvesting, you know, of of the the sap of the trees, and there were various uh, stands stands with all sorts of products. And at, at some time they had a, a uh, like a, you know, people sat around and there was a, a sort of test. They wanted to make a test of who would like, who would, uh, which maple syrup is the best, best one. So they had three uh, anonymous bottles with syrup in them. And they had uh, some candidates that came up, I don't know, three or five people came up and they tasted the three. Uh, and uh, all, of, all of the three or five people, they, they liked one, one of the three. And it was uh, Aunt Jemima uh, syrup. Uh, Aunt Jemima syrup is that, that uh, awful, syrup that's made in the laboratory, they didn't like the maple syrup. So we are habituated to feeling as me a person and to honoring me and my images and my persona and to judge and to to boast ourselves or to defend ourselves or to blame others. We're so used to, so it's not so much it's an acquired taste, it's rather the shedding, to shed the conditioning. And in our case, what we're talking about is shedding the entire me, structure, which is at the core of it, that I am a person, that I am not you. I am this body, that I'm defined in a certain way, and you're defined in a different way. So, so we don't need to acquire the habit of being, because we already are being. We simply need to to see the falsehood that we exist in time and space. The falsehood that, that I am what I imagine myself to be. What I imagine myself to be is just imagination. 
is images, images like you dream at night, you're a butterfly or a dinosaur, whatever you are, a bird. This is, but you're not that. So the, it's, it's not so much a shedding away. It's not so much a, a acquire, have acquired, uh, but it's shedding away, it's seeing understanding. It's about the understanding of what I refers to and, and, and to come to a lived, living understanding because it is living right now. This this is this beingness. It's alive, and uh, so the understanding permeates your being. So you, you so being understanding are they're not two. And the, the being is permeated by the understanding, and the understanding is about being. It's, it's an understanding of being, that being is, and being is real, and there is one reality. Being alive, baby. Being, uh, being alive. Being, yeah, I just... Yeah, be, the, the, being another way of speaking about being is to say being is life, life is being, but not life in the way we usually think about it. We usually think about life in terms of life and death. It is opposite. Life is not death and death is not life. No, it's not that way. So being as life, life eternal, meaning in this moment, in this moment, the timeless, the timelessness of being. So the timelessness of being is life. That's another word for life, but not a life of 80 years or 100 years or, or life on planet Earth and maybe there is life on another planet somewhere. You know, no, it's not that way because that's, you're just talking about the manifestation, life on another planet planet is just a manifestation. It's a it's a, a form. It's a certain tribe, you know, maybe there are characters with four heads or whatever, you know, on some other plants and they're very bright. But that's still a manifestation. So in being alive, that which is alive is being. In, the, in that wording, being alive is, I am not alive, no. Aliveness is beingness. Beingness and aliveness are, uh, would be synonymous, which is quite different from somebody being alive. Because the somebody is an add-on. In our experience right now, it's just what it is. We can call it life, we can call it presence, we can call it beingness, we can call it not knowingness. But when we add somebody into this experience, we are doing an add-on. We're, we're project, we're uh, introducing an imaginary player, an imaginary actor an imaginary doer, an imaginary chooser. So aliveness in the non-dual sense is absolute. In fact, in the non-dual sense, there are no opposites. So when we refer to form, we refer to their reality because the reality has no opposites. The opposites are concepts, concepts, up or down, east coast, west coast, uh, male, female, all of these are concepts. But in reality, there isn't a male and female. Reality is genderless. It is not, it's not genderless. It, it, 
is beyond gender, gender is the, the dream or the manifestation of reality. So it manifests as galaxies, as uh, uh, rhinoceroses, as uh, volcanoes, as conversations, all of it, all manifestations. Their reality is one, which is being, beingness. Amazing. And this reality is, is what we refer to as I, I. I is that. But it's, it's not objective. Reality is not objective. Objectivity is a projection, is an add-on. You say, oh, there, there has to be, there must be an object. But then how to discern the I, which believes to be a character, then to to see that it's reality. I mean, um, what's the feeling? What's the difference in feeling quality between the two? Yes, between reality and and character and the sense of me. Yes. Yeah. So the the qualitative aspect of being of awareness is uh, the no absence of resistance and absence of a sense of lack. Yeah. Absence of concerns. S complete, complete as absence of black, complete absence of concerns. So when you experience the absence of sense of lack, the absence of worry, the absence of concern, you're experiencing a, a sample, a, sam a sample of the experience of being. Absolute, an absolute being, being, knowing itself, being itself. So we, we are privy to this experience. We all, we all know absence of lack and absence of worries. We, we know that experience. And because we know it, uh, well, when we come together in those meetings, these meetings, we hang out together in this absence of worry, absence of concern, absence of lack absence of personal desire. We, we hang out 
as a as a laboratory. It's as a as a gathering room. We we come to soak into that. And so when we then when we leave and we, there is life, is the children work, uh, going to the market, we have to finish a report by a certain time, etc. Then you you're introducing you're introducing within that that uh, beingness within within that that presence activity so the the quality that you experience in uh, these meetings that carry on effect and you become more and more uh, I'm familiar with activity arising, occurring, appearing in that space. And so uh, so that the experience of that you're asking about of being, being awareness, uh, becomes more and more uh, uh, prevalent in your life, in your, in everything, within everything that you are doing. So, so and then we come back, you, you know, we come back to to soak again, to recollect again. And at some point we just come back, but you're not really, you, you're not leaving, you, you're, you're not entering into a new space because at some point you just come here because you enjoy, you know, and you bring the joy, you leave with the joy, it's the joy is always there, you see. Yeah, I like it when you say soaking in presence. Yes. Amazing. And how much resistance there was before from the character to just rest and just to relax and not to do anything and yes. not to survive and just to be. All right. So then the activities that life activities they they are embraced within this presence they're they appear within the presence there is a response and activity sometimes there is effort effort uh, sometimes we close the door sometimes we open the door but but it's all occurring within this presence. It's not like the presence is being pushed out in order to make room for the world and activities, no. It's, it's welcomed.
Thank you, Mike. Amazing. Hey, Thank you. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to address this question that was sent to me. So it treats what is closer to who I really am? Is it feelings or thinking? Feel, feeling or thinking? During my formal contemplation practice, I sometimes ask, who am I? Or some other question for inquiry, but it usually leads to thoughts and the whole conversation takes place about who I am and who I am not. Should I try to feel or sense my own presence, silence or being, instead of using the thought process? So the, the thought process has its place, but it has to be used in, a, uh, in the proper way. The thought process is used in the inquiry, in the questioning but it's not used in the repeating of who I am, who am I, who am I, who am I, who am I, what am I, what am I. No. If your practice is a practice of repeating who am I, it's of no use. Uh, because it's like a parrot, like a parrot can be trained to ask, who am I, who am I? But it has no significance. What matters in your question is your passion for truth, your deep interest passion, which is behind the question. So when a question such as who am I, what am I, or what is this, what is it? When such a question arises, from your passion, then that question carries in it the answer. But it's quite different from practicing or repeating who am I? Because all you're doing is like, you know, the the hamster on the wheel. You know, the hamster runs around in circle. We use reasoning. We use the mind in 
these meetings and in the teaching, there is the use of the mind to inquire about truth, to explore your experience using reason. So we explore the validity of our beliefs. Is there evidence Concrete evidence, not just feelings and thoughts. Is there evidence that I am a man or I am a woman? I am a person. Is there evidence that I, consciousness is personal and limited? So we use thought in a certain way to decipher, to explore this question, to inquire into this, this question, into similar questions about our beliefs that we exist in time and space, for example, or our belief that there is a physical reality. We explore via reasoning and via our experience. It's not just a conceptual exploration, let's say, it's a, it's a conceptual expression that is rooted in our experience. So we, we're looking at our experience. Of course, we use concepts, but we're exploring our experience. Uh, so in your question about, should I be feeling my own presence rather than using the thought process? In terms of feeling your presence, yes, the feeling of presence is a sort of relax, a relaxation. It's a form of relaxation and feeling the, your presence first in the absence of any desire. So you relax. You let go of any objects and you sort of Enjoy just being, enjoy just soaking into being, relaxing, enjoying relaxation, enjoying being. And then you introduce certain activities slowly, a certain activity. For example, you move your arms. You move your hands, which is an activity. And you move your hands in a way that there is the movement, but there is also the relaxation. So the movement is occurring within the relaxation. It's not disturbing the relaxation. Then you can move your head. explore the same thing. You can stand around, open the door, step out for a minute. As you are doing all these activities, you're introducing, you're introducing within that relaxation, that, that sense of being, activities. So yes, if you can proceed that way, that's a very good uh, direction to explore presence or relaxation as you 
are introducing activities within that relaxation. You don't want the relaxation to be replaced by the activity. You want the activity to come appear within that relaxation. So this is anyway the direction of sensing or feeling presence. Uh, both the, 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 the path of uh, reasoning and the path of feeling are good path, but they're, they're complementary path. They, you, you don't choose one at the exclusion, exclusion, exclusivity of the other. You have to navigate both paths, but navigating the path of thought or the path of reasoning is not a repetition of who am I, who am I, who am I. So when you uh, are using the, the path of inquiry, the core inquiry is the exploration of what proof do I have? What validation do I have that I, consciousness, is mortal, is born, exists in time and space, is a male or female form, is dependent on the brain, or is dependent on the body, this is the type of exploration that you should uh, be involved in. Otherwise, just stick with the uh, being presence, and you. So you you. You suspend the activities of thinking of the world. You suspend all activities, and you connect with a sense of being, of peace, of relaxation. And then slowly, slowly, you introduce uh, the world. You introduce the body into into your experience. Okay, so are there any questions uh, here? Anybody has any question? Okay, so if there are no questions, I thank you all. Very lovely to be with you, Holger. And Lisa, nice to see you, Lisa. And Frank, and Frank. Lomarga, and Grace, and Grace. And Malcon, hey Malcon. George, and Alan, and Lucas. And Zoe, hello, Zoe. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you, Zoe. And Desmond, a holly. Thank you all. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Magdi.